everyone gets wrong about planes. Most plane doors aren't locked. There are no keys, no sensors or passcodes to secure them. If someone wants to pull the lever, they can. Wait, what do you mean? Opened the emergency exit door and forced his way off the plane. And yet, what? with 40 million flights each year, these doors are virtually never opened in flight. Hey, hey, so yo, wait, 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 they're not locked. What, anyone can open it? Bro, you never told me that. They're not locked. I, I thought it was like, like you, you got like a special key or something. You have to open up the emergency. I thought the staff would do it. So why not? Your self-preservation, surely. Common sense. Most people are, you know, smart enough to not mess with that. The real answer relies on where planes fly. How oh my high do God. planes fly, approximately? 10,000 kilometers, or is that overshooting it? I think that's overshooting it. I think you'd be in <laughs> space. <laughs> 25,000 kilometers. That that's hard? the height of a plane flying. Is that way too low? It's too much. It's, it's too, too much, too much, too much. Oh, too much. Bring it down. Maybe 1,000 kilometers? 1,000 kilometers, still isn't space. It, yo, isn't it 30,000 feet? I know my, I know my stuff, chat. Isn't it 30,000 feet? 50,000 feet, I think. Yeah, some of them can go up to 43,000 feet. 30,000 feet. 38,000 feet. Yeah, yeah. Why do they fly that high? Uh, I don't know. Safety, I guess. Probably so to obviously avoid, travel with um, the birds. Collision with other aircrafts and if there's high mountain ranges. I don't know, when the when storms or, or, or weather hit. My guess is to avoid a turbulent weather. I think that's a decent guess. Now, it's true that one of the benefits of flying at 30,000 feet is a smoother ride. This is high in the troposphere, the layer in which most weather occurs. So there's less turbulence and fewer storms to navigate around. Okay. But this is not the main reason that planes fly so high. The bigger reason, of course, is money. Ah. As you go up, the density of air decreases. And at 33,000 feet or 10 kilometers, the density of air is just a third of what it is at sea level. So flying at this altitude, the plane runs into a third of the air molecules it would closer to the Wait, ground. Yo, why did they just go higher then, bro? They'll save more money and less bad weather. If the higher you go, the more money you save and the less bad weather. Why do you just keep going higher? Why did you just go really high? That means the plane can fly about 73% faster for the same amount of thrust. And as a result, you get oh, to damn. your destination faster. And since you spend less time in the air, you burn less fuel. It seems in a way that like climbing is wasted energy. Can you compare like the descent to the ascent? Do you essentially get the energy back as you fall down the other side? Yeah. When we climb, we burn about 80 kilos per minute. In cruise, we burn about 40 kilos per minute, and in descent, it's maybe 10. So it's almost negligible. Not only that, jet engines are more efficient at altitude. They work by compressing air at the intake, mixing it with fuel and igniting it. So the combustion products are ejected very fast from the exhaust nozzle. Now, this process is more efficient the colder the air is. And at altitude, the temperature is around minus 50 degrees Celsius, which is a lot colder than Mad. an average of plus 15 here at the ground. So flying higher means Yo, you... I think we should just travel on space shuttles then, bro. Would that mean you go really fast? Like, you, bro, you could go across the world in like an hour? Burn less fuel for less you time space. and avoid the weather and associated turbulence of lower altitudes. The other reason you want to fly high is to take advantage of the jet stream tailwinds. And the company likes people who do that because you're burning less fuel, so it's less, less money. But there is a problem with flying this high. The air up there is unbreathable. If we you were suddenly to breathe, teleported man. to the top of Mount Everest, a height lower than planes fly, we're not leaving you would the plane. remain conscious for only about three minutes. This is because in addition to density dropping with altitude, so does air pressure. Air pressure actually falls off faster because it depends on the weight of all the air above you. So at 10 kilometers, the air pressure is only a quarter of what it is at sea level. To be clear, the air is still 21% oxygen, but the partial pressure of oxygen, the pressure exerted solely by oxygen molecules, is around 5.5 kilo- Yo, chat. Obviously we need oxygen. 
right? Isn't nitrogen what we breathe out? What's the other, bro? What's the other? Pascals, which is a quarter of what it is on the ground. Now at this- Oh, we breathe out Wait, the other's carbon dioxide? Or carbon dioxide is what we breathe out? We breathe out carbon dioxide. Oh. So we breathe in nitrogen. That does sound good. I thought nitrogen is bad. So what's the other then, bro? Are we breathing the nitrogen, but we don't use it? Now at this pressure, not enough oxygen molecules can force their way into your blood in your lungs. To function normally, humans need an oxygen partial pressure of at least 16 kilopascals. So all the cabins of airplanes that cruise at high altitude must be pressurized. A little bit of air is continuously brought into the cabin from outside. It actually comes in from the compression stage of the jet engines. That is what maintains breathable air inside the plane. The downside is that you are taking away a little bit of the efficiency of the engines. Now Wait, what the fuck? Wait, so you, when you're on a plane, you breathe in the plane's engines. Bro, that don't sound good. That don't sound good to me. Oh, pressurizing the cabin required a radical redesign of aircraft. Before pressurization, planes would fly up to 10,000 feet, or around three kilometers, where the, the partial fuck? pressure of oxygen is 15 kilopascals, just at the limit of what people can handle. On these planes, doors opened outward, and there wasn't much concern about the seal around them, since the pressure was the same on both sides. But once planes were pressurized, all the doors were changed to be the shape of a plug. They're wider on the inside than the outside. That way, the higher pressure inside the cabin pushes the door into its frame, creating an airtight seal. How airtight is a cabin? It's pretty airtight, but not completely airtight. So you'll notice, for example, every time that someone flushes the toilet, you'll see some of the air pressure go down. So every, every time that happens, you, you can actually see the cabin altitude jump a little bit. And wait, 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 what? <laughs> wait, so if somebody, fl so if you just stand in the toilet, keep flushing it, would that fuck up the plane? Yeah, you get toilet turbulence. <laughs> This is why plane doors and emergency what exit doors fuck? don't need locks. The difference in pressure between the pressurized cabin and the low pressure exterior is so great that no one is strong enough to pull the door inwards. Oh, so when you're, flying, had... when you're flying, you genuinely can't do it. Wait, chat, I know this might be a dumb question, but <laughs> you know when you shit in a toilet, in a plane, does it actually fall out of the plane? Or does it stay in the plane? It actually falls out the plane. Okay, so hear me out. So what if you're landing or taking off and you take a shit? Does that mean there would be shit on the runway? Surely they don't shit out the plane. Oh, it goes to a unit. Okay, I thought so. But when you flush, it sounds like it's going out the plane. <laughs> I'm so confused. And come up and turn that while you're mid-flight. Nothing. Even modern plane doors that open outward are shaped like <laughs> plugs. Hey, Baba girl, appreciate the five gift to Baba. They're just cleverly designed. The main passenger door on a Boeing 737 is both wider and taller than the frame it needs to pass through. But when you pull the lever, gates at the top and bottom fold in, reducing the height just enough. However, the sides are still too wide, so the door first has to pop inside and rotate. It's that movement inwards that is impossible at altitude. It would require a force equivalent to lifting 9,000 uh, kilograms. I, well, that's a bit dumb then, right? Because like, yo, what if there's an emergency in the air and you need to jump out the plane and you can't open the door? You know what I'm saying? What if you need a plane hop, bro? You gotta jump out a plane into another plane. Have you ever seen James Bond? 
And airplane cabins aren't even fully pressurized to the sea level pressure of 101.3 kilopascals. You may have noticed this if you take a bag of chips on a plane. It's easy to squish on the ground, but as the plane climbs, the pressure in the cabin drops and the chip bag seems to oh, inflate Oh, is that like why it does it? I measured the pressure in my plane and at cruising altitude, oh. the pressure dropped to 77 kilopascals meaning the partial pressure of oxygen was only 16 kilopascals. I always the wonder minimum why it required does that. for people on the plane to feel normal. This has some unintended consequences. Do you think you fart more in a plane? <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I'd blame someone else. <laughs> I feel like no. It's no. No. I can't let it rip. No way in the world. Do you think you fart more in a plane than on the ground? 100%. <laughs> no you know what? I actually don't think I've ever fought sure, on a plane. It's got to do with the cabin pressure, right? So as you go up, that cavity in here now expands, and the air wants to go somewhere. And the quickest place it can go is south. <laughs> oh wait, red. Bag of chips just popped by itself. Now, the International Space Station is pressurized to sea level pressure, 101.3 kilopascals. Oh my God! Wait, wait, wait! It just meant this space station. Yo, have you guys seen that, you know, the um, the astronauts that are stuck in space right now? Have you seen that they called down NASA and they were, they're hearing some weird sonar sounds? Yo. Bro, we should, we should actually try and find a video on that. It looks cool. They're hearing some weird sounds, bro. And they've had to ask, what is this? So why are planes pressurized to the minimum extent possible to carry human passengers? Well, it's actually for a very good reason. In 1988, Aloha Airlines 243 was en route from Hilo to Honolulu, Hawaii. The cabin was being pressurized as we've described, but unfortunately, this plane's fuselage had a small crack. And all of a sudden, uh -oh. at 24,000 feet, the crack widened and the whole roof tore off the front of the plane. If we've seen that the other day. Miraculously, the pilots were able to land safely and only one person was killed. That is fucking crazy, bro. How you land this is mind blowing. The difference between the International Space Station and a plane is that the ISS was pressurized once and it stays pressurized. But a plane experiences a pressure difference every time it climbs to cruising altitude. So the fuselage is stretched and then relaxed with every flight. Stretched and relaxed, stretched and relaxed. The Aloha Airlines plane had the second highest 737 flight cycle count in the world, with nearly 90,000 in total. That's way more than it was designed for. This led to fatigue, yeah, cracking, corrosion, and the eventual explosive decompression. Air pop is so horrible. So planes, planes are pressurized to the least extent possible to minimize stresses and extend the life of the plane. But even 75% of atmospheric pressure should be plenty to prevent the doors from opening. So how did this happen in May 2023? Yeah, wait, how did it got open? A passenger panicked and, and actually managed to open an Airbus emergency exit in flight. They were on what? the final approach then, they were quite close to the ground, so the pressure differential was very little. And because of- Wait, what are you panicking about that badly, bro? to open a plane door mid-flight. What, what are you, I don't get it. Like what is going through your head? What is getting you that scared that you got to open the door, bro? He, him using all of his force, he actually managed to get the door open, which was crazy. And we didn't think that that was possible, but if you want something Mad. bad Left enough, I guess it on. is. <laughs> wow. Was he okay? He was okay. Everyone was okay in that case. That was a pretty serious mishap. So I guess the next Why logical question is, that? have any other passengers inadvertently caused a mishap by say, forgetting to put their phone on airplane mode? When you're sitting there on the tarmac and they come on and tell you to put your phone on airplane mode, mm -hmm. do you do it? And why, why do they Wait, get us to- Wait, chat, be honest. Do you guys actually do that? Do you go on airplane mode? I do, but that's because I'm scared of flying. No, nope, never. But I know for a fact so many people don't, bro. So there's genuinely no point. I know for a fact loads of people don't do it. To do that. What is the reason? Is there a reason? Obviously, they wouldn't 
asked you to do it if it wasn't for some benefit. I am unfortunately a bit of a rebel and I don't follow the rules. And yep. But you're not worried about taking the plane down? I'd make oh, you're a rebel, buddy, there. Yeah? Go jump out of a plane then, bro. You're not allowed to do that. Go on. Go and jump out of a plane, bro, and then tell me how much of a rebel you are after this, huh? Sure, my, my parents have the airplane mode on, so I can have it off. I mean, yes, I do, because I don't want it interfering with, like, the radio or whatever. Well, I think it's the um, communication interference. I feel like I've always been told, like, it messes up, like, instruments, but honestly... Yeah, that's what I've They're thought. always just told to do it, so, you know, <laughs> just gotta put your phone in airplane mode. In 1961, the Federal radio. Aviation Administration, or FAA, found that some portable FM radios could interfere with plane navigation systems since they used neighboring radio bands. And out of caution, they banned almost all personal electronics on flights. But airlines could test any device for interference and overrule the FAA ban to allow it on board. Any device that is, except a phone because another organization has jurisdiction over phones, and that's the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. See, a phone yeah, on the nice ground phone, with bro. buildings and hills around it can usually only see one or two cell towers at the same time. But from the air, it could see 10 or 20 or more. The concern was that 200 phones traveling at 800 kilometers per hour in a plane could rapidly connect to many towers at once, overloading the infrastructure. At least, that's what the FCC thought could happen. So they banned cell phone use in flight in 1991. Oh wait, so it more so affects down on the ground than it does in the plane. But there's a problem with this theory. A plane is a big metal enclosure, essentially a Faraday cage, so it should block almost all electromagnetic signals. That's why plane antennas are located on the outside. Your phone signals can only escape through the windows, which means they go horizontally out the sides of the plane, so they would have to travel long distances before reaching the ground. And the cell towers your phone is trying to connect to? Well, they are tilted downwards, you know, to collect all the signals from people walking around on the ground. So it's very hard to make a connection from the air unless you're flying really low. So phones could only conceivably disrupt ground networks during takeoff or landing. And the FCC never even tested if this was the case. In 2005, Yo, chat, they- I know this is like a little bit off topic, but it's like looking at these like sound waves, yeah? But do you know what blows my mind? Is that how you can actually hear my voice through electronics? Does anyone actually think about that? Like, you know, when you're on the phone, they can hear your voice exactly how it is. So your voice, you're talking in, like you're talking into your phone, yeah? And your phone is turning your voice turning it into all this electronic waves and then pulling it onto the other phone as your voice. Bro, that is so fucking weird. That is like, bro, I, I understand like the camera. That's a bit different than a voice, bro. That's weird, bro. That is weird. It's so weird. They went before Congress and said the rule banning 800 megahertz cell phone use in flight may not be needed in order to protect ground-based cellular networks. Yeah, but like, what I'm saying is like, I don't sound like a robot to you. Like if I go like really deep or like really high pitch, you, can hit, you know what I mean? You can hear every single bit of it, bro. Perfectly. And that's all from like the electronics taking it. Bro. Oh my God. I don't, how, how, how me, how, how does that work, bro? How does that work? As far as we know, a mobile phone has never caused an air accident. All airplane mode does for sure is save your battery life. Magic. <laughs> so why are these rules still around? I've been flying myself and where I've gotten interference, you know, when you're talking to a traffic control and you get that you know, that signal. And that is because someone is either using their phone or the phone is on. Will one oh. uh, phone in an aircraft cause any problems? Probably not. Will 200 do something? Maybe. Rather than taking the chance of like, let's everyone update their Twitter profile at 500 feet. Rather than saying that, we'll, we're saying no, you know, just keep them off, you know, enjoy the Wi-Fi up at altitude and, and, and that's it. 
But uh, airplane mode might soon okay. be a thing of the past. The EU actually no longer requires it and is pushing for airlines to provide 5G service on all EU flights. Bro, please, can you do this? Please, 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 bro. Listen, I've been on a plane loads of times, yeah? I've never once experienced internet on the plane because I've always done short flights, okay? So none of the planes have internet, bro. I'm telling you right now, as somebody that is scared of flying, yeah? Bro, this would help so much. It will make time fly. It would make time fly. Bro, you're telling me I could go on my fucking phone and go on the internet, bro. Oh my God. I've never been on a plane with internet. Was it bad, Harry? Please do it for, oh, I hope. Please do it for all planes. Please do it for all planes. So we may eliminate that inconvenience, but we still have to deal with airplane food. What do you think about airplane food? I'm All not bothered. I'm not bothered rolls. about the food. There's anything I can handle. <laughs> Apart from that, everything tastes like mush. It can either be very good or it can be very terrible. Uh, blandish, different consistency. Do you think the food tastes as good in a plane as it would on the ground? No. Wait, really, Harry? But bad that tasting bad? food might not be all the airline's fault. See, the air that's pumped into the cabin at altitude is really- Yo, don't tell me the air pressure takes away the flavor, bro. Don't tell me that. Really <laughs> dry. I mean, the Sahara Desert, for reference, has an average relative humidity of 25%. But inside an airplane cabin, it can be as low as 5%. This can dry out your nasal passages, hindering your sense of smell and therefore taste. The lower cabin pressure can also decrease sensations like the intensity of salt and sugar. But there is one flavor that appears to be enhanced in flight. What? What do you drink in an airplane? What's your drink of choice? Apple juice. Apple juice? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I, I mean, Coke, that's default. Orange or apple juice? Gin and tonic? Maybe a Bloody Mary if, if uh... You're the first one today. Really? Yeah. A German survey of a thousand flyers found that more than a quarter of them order tomato juice in flight. Oh. And what's really weird is that 23% of those people would never drink it on the ground. Oh. And would you drink Bloody Mary? With Why the fuck would you drink tomato juice? What? That'd be like a standard drink at the bar or is it a special plane drink? I only have it on planes. So. Why is everyone ordering tomato juice? Well, it could be because of the noise. A 2015 what? study points to the corda tympani, a nerve that carries taste information from the tongue to the brainstem. It runs right past the eardrum, between the tiny sound conducting bones. So loud cabin noise might unintentionally stimulate it. This could produce an audio illusion that boosts our sense of umami, the savory taste you find in MSG, soy sauce, and well, tomatoes. I always drink tomato juice, and I never knew why. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Next time I'm gonna fly, I'm gonna try toma tomato juice. And I don't like tomatoes that much. And I've never drank tomato juice. I'm gonna try it, bro. I'm gonna try it. It just felt like my plain drink, or like spicy tomato juice. Yeah. Like what? both of those are favorites of mine. Yeah. So next time you're on a flight, go for something extra sweet or salty, Sounds or maybe disgusting, try bro. the tomato juice. I feel like with how much people fly, our perspective of flying is still pretty distorted. So why is that? Yeah. I know that we talk a lot about accidents and incidents and we dig into them really, really deep. And people might ask, why would you be doing this? Doesn't that just make people even more afraid of flying? But the fact is that this is one of the prime reasons why aviation is as safe as it is. The fact that we have hundreds of professionals that dig deep into these accidents means that we learn from them. So every flight becomes a little bit safer. That's actually a big reason that I started my channel, Mentor Pilot, in the first hey, place. Hey, that's why, chat, listen, listen, I'm scared of flying, bro, but that's exactly why I'm watching these videos, man, to try and help me overcome it, you know what I mean? If you learn more by it, surely, like, the fear will slowly go, no? That's what I'm hoping, bro. That's what I'm fucking hoping for. <laughs> it's not working, but surely it will, bro. 